Right about. I'm on it. Thank you. Be right back. With the clock ticking and minutes slipping away till the season's end, I had very little time to avert a gastronomic catastrophe. Fortunately, my friends at Desert Tech came through with a solitary cow tag, so I met up with Jeff and Matt after a 12-hour drive through the beautiful southwest. Right on. Well, this is us right here, so this is where we're staying, so if you guys want to grab your stuff, we cool. can throw it out, and then uh, the property's just, see all those keep out signs you drove past? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all the property, so... If you want, we can throw out stuff here, and then we can head over there and go look around. Maybe yep. get out the gun, do a little fire off a couple shots. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sound good? Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Grab looks up. Get in position, and then yep. you pull down on it, and it drops to the ground, and then you can screw it out to go up or down. Sweet. So that way, if you want to use a bag, you can use a bag, but mm -hmm. it's it's just as easy with that, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll take the monopod. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna throw some of these in here so you're ready to go. The limited amount of time to get this done, there's no real cause for half measures, so 300 normal is it. I see one standing broadside and it looks like a couple others down below it. Yeah, I got him. No, you're right. That does look like a rock. <laughs> How many times does that, does that happen? <laughs> is that stump? Look at stump. No. You ever been bear hunting in Montana? Yeah. Have you and with with all the tree stump, all the burnt tree stumps yep. every fucking yep. place you look, and yep. it's like, oh shit, there's a bear. Oh wait, there's a bear. No, there's there's billions of bears everywhere. I once spent three about three days on the hillside in Alaska, willing a stump about two miles away to be a caribou. Come on, move. There is a metric ass ton of elk about two miles down there on top of a ridge. No idea how. Is that uh, part of the problem? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's more moving in as well out of that ball. It's coming up the hill. We've checked zero of the weapon. Good to go on that score. We've seen elk, we've seen a lot of elk. So we're running out of light. We'll be back tomorrow morning. We're checking out this hillside, seeing if there's any elk out where we spotted them last night. See if we can find them so we can go put the moves on them. See them? Okay. Last night we were standing on a hill way down the valley down here and we saw elk somewhere on this hillside and this morning we decided to go out, scoot around and then glass for a little bit, see if we can't spot them. And it turns out as we come back our cabin is right there and the elk are about a thousand yards up that way. Just pop over the top of the ridge line, get a range on them and drop a cow, hopefully get her in the freezer by mm, 10 o'clock.
bottom. See that tree at the very bottom? Yeah. She's right left of it, about four elk left of that tree at the bottom. Of the group. 720. That's a hit. Good. Shoulder. She's down. She's down. She's back up. She's right behind the tree. She's down. down. She's down. She's down in the tree. All right, we got some groceries. <laughs> we got groceries. <laughs> nice shot. Thanks. Perfect. Perfect meat animal. Yeah. We're about to get a master class from Matt here as to how to do the gutless method of preparing an elk in the field. And I've never been able to do this. I always end up with uh, guts sticking out and then having to gut the animal anyway. So I'm going to be interested to see how a master achieves this goal. Tenderloin from inside the backbone. That's actually this meat you can see sticking up right there. That's where the vertebrae come through. That muscle doesn't is never used, so it's the best muscle on the entire animal. All right, so we've got today's elk. It's gonna go into the hot pan here with a little bit of bacon grease. We're gonna see how the fresh elk that we shot today compares to the elk that we brought from home that's from a past trip. So we'll do a little bit of both and see how it turns out. This here's fresh tenderloins from Ian's elk from this morning. And then to go with it, we're gonna throw in some other elk from, that we brought from home. Oh yeah, this is just a taste test piece. I'm gonna try that myself. So here we have the finished tenderloins from me and Zilk this morning. This is the elk from home. We're gonna let Ian bite into it here and tell us what he thinks. I know you like raw, so look at that. Damn, doesn't get any better than this. Really doesn't. Alright, let's have a piece. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for setting this up. No problem. Thank you for coming. Nah, great job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll uh, see you guys next time, I guess. Look forward to it, man. Alright, thanks a lot. Got, Got groceries now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this wasn't the most challenging hunt I've ever been on. A friend of mine once said that sometimes you just get an easy one to make up for all the times you either strike out completely or wind up packing 100 pounds of meat down a mountainside in a blizzard. I got you your elk. Oh, great, thanks. But we have to feed the dogs, so what about dog food? 